Creating and using your own ShadCN UI like components and even full page templates is now easier than ever thanks to the new ShadCN command line tool. Now this was a particularly awesome release for me since I made Jolly UI as a fork of ShadCN. It's just the ShadCN styles applied to React Area components instead of Radix UI for your headless UI library. Now there's already been some great videos covering ShadCN UI and the new CLI from Jack, Theo and Fireship. What I want to show you today is how we could take one command like this. So using the ShadCN CLI here, so doing ShadCN add and then a URL we can go ahead and add in our own custom components that are hosted somewhere and in this example literally just using github and this is going to go ahead and add in an own custom template page here and also some custom components here so this dialogue component is a custom component i've built on headless ui here and that adds it to our project installs all of the dependencies and we can load it up and there we go in literally seconds we have this entire template page in our project a custom one that we've built and it also has our custom components as well so this has the mobile navigation here as the dialogue component there so hopefully you can see how this is going to be really powerful especially if you have your own internal ui component library or templates that you like to use and you can see here in this tweet from shad cn just how powerful this cli could become as he says here you can go ahead and start with the new york theme from shad cn adding colors from an external theme set up super base auth components from v0 and a custom stripe setup all in one single command here. So you would just run, add the custom start here, and it would go ahead and set up all of that code for you in your project, all of the dependencies and all of those components that you're going to need. So you can see how powerful this would become even outside of UI libraries. So let's take a look at how this is done. How does Netflix make that service work so well at such a big scale? Come to think of it, how do any of these large companies build scalable software? It's probably quite hard to find out. Hey, you know it's not that hard, right? You could just sign up for the Hacking Scale newsletter from BetterStack. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a bi-weekly newsletter on Substack. It covers all kinds of topics on building and scaling software. Like this one I just sent you on how Netflix uses throttling. I could never learn to code like that, though. Look! Well, good news then. You can find loads of great programming stories on the BetterStack YouTube channel. Like this one I just made about using Redis with Node. Oh, cool. Thanks, man. Wait, wasn't that door locked? So what is a registry and how does the CLI know what to go ahead and install in your project? Well, if I take the ShadCN UI example here, if I go into this apps folder here, and then we go to the public folder, so all of the Next.js static files, you see he has hosted this R folder here, and inside of here, a load of JSON files. Now this is what the CLI actually goes ahead and reads to know what it needs to install. So if I click into this index.json here, you see it has a load of different component definitions for all of his components in ShadCN UI. And if I actually go back out and then go into one of the styles, we can actually get the specific component itself. So say you did ShadCN add accordion, it would go ahead and connect to this file here and you can see it can get the content. So this is the code that it goes ahead and adds to your project. It knows what dependencies it needs to go ahead and install. And it even knows what Tailwind config it needs to append to your existing Tailwind one as well. So this is a registry and you can actually see this is hosted on ui.shadcn.com slash r here. So when you go to that file, you go to the base registry file that just has all of the component definitions in here. And as I said, the CLI takes this in, handles that, and then it knows what to install in your project. So that is exactly how I got Jolly UI here, my ShadCN UI fork built on top of React Area components to go ahead and work with the new ShadCN CLI. So if I click into here and then we go to CLI, you can see you can just add my components by doing ShadCN add and then the link to the component itself. And as I said, this is just gonna be using the JSON registry file underneath the hood. Now you can actually do it a different way with this registry URL up here and change the base registry. That just means that you can refer to the components by their names and it will know that you need to install it from Jolly UI. But I'm gonna go ahead and recommend doing this way as I think this one is going to be a better user experience and it's just going to be more clear where you're actually adding your files from. So I'll go ahead and change my documentation after this for Jolly UI to update it to use this URL format. But let's go ahead and see how you could do this for yourself. So to help out with that then I went ahead and created this ShadCN registry starter project here on GitHub and I'll leave this linked in the description down below. But essentially all this is is all of the files from ShadCN UI that are needed to go ahead and create a registry. So all of the credit for this code goes to ShadCN and you can even see down here I do say this is unofficial and there's actually an exciting plan from ShadCN here. As you can see here in this tweet he says he's exploring abstracting the build registry script in an npm package you can point at any custom path and it will build the schema files for you. He's already got it working but he's not ready to ship it so hopefully this process is going to become a whole lot easier in the future and i'll go ahead and update the description of this video and also that repo as and when that comes out but for now i'll be showing you how to do it with this repo here so let's go ahead and clone this and open it up in vs code so once you've cloned that, you're going to want to go ahead and install the dependencies as well using pmpm install. And let's go ahead and explain the project structure here. 
So what you can see in this scripts folder here is it's the build registry script. This is the one that actually goes ahead and creates the JSON files inside of this folder here. And as I said, the JSON files are the ones that you need to host somewhere if you want to be able to install components using the CLI. Now the registry folder is the important one. Inside of here, what we have is that we have our two styles and inside of the styles, we have some categories for our components. As you can see here with the blocks, these are essentially the full page templates that Shadcn uses. So you can see here with this one for the login example, this is how I can go ahead and install this login block. And that's gonna go ahead and add in a full login page into my project. And this is where we store the code for it. The other ones as well is in the example. This is just for our various component examples. You can see we've got some smaller demos of how to use that. You can even use custom hooks with the CLI as well. So you can install any code you want essentially with this new CLI. So it's really awesome and really powerful. But you can see here, it's just some categorization of these various different functions. You can see we've got this lib function. This is how ShadCN installs the CN function into your projects. So say you had a custom one, like a date formatter or something, you wanted to use that across a load of different projects, or maybe your component relies on that. So you want to install that when other people install your component, you can go ahead and set that up in here. And then finally, the UI folder in here is for the actual components themselves. So nice UI looking components. So you can see here, I've left in the accordion example from ShadCN UI, and this is the one that built on top of Radix UI. Now you may be seeing a load of errors, that's because in this ShadCN registry starter, I'm not going to be using React or anything like that or Radix UI. I'm essentially just going to be using this as a text database for the code as it's going to go ahead and read this file here and just know what it needs to add to the JSON file and then install in your component in the future. So if I close this folder now, the important files are actually these registry ones here as this is essentially our schema. You can see there is a schema down here that uses Zod and this is essentially the definition that we need to conform to. But if I go to registryui.ts, now all of these are going to be a little bit similar. What you'll see is how you define your component to create that JSON file. So here we have the name for the component, so that's going to be accordion. You have the dependency it's going to use, so that's Radix UI in this case. You have the file that we're going to be pointing to. Now note we don't actually add in the style for this as it will go ahead and work that out for us. And then you can even define some custom Tailwind config that it needs to go ahead and append to the Tailwind config when you install this component. Now if I check out the blocks registry as well, you can see essentially the same thing. We have the name for this block. But we can even do some cool things with the file down here where we essentially point it to what path this block is at. But then we can also change the target that's going to install that to. So here it's going to install that page to app slash login slash page dot TSX. That's how it goes ahead and sets it up in the app router ready to go for you. And you see it even has registry dependencies here. Now this is really cool because essentially if your component relies on a load of other components inside of your registry, you can define them here and it will go ahead and work for you. But there's an important thing to note and we'll be doing this when we set this up. If you're using your own registry, you're going to want to replace these with the actual URL to your JSON file for your custom registry components. Because at the moment, if I went ahead and set up a custom registry and just use these names, it's going to go ahead and use the actual ShadCM button card and input where you may not want it to. As I said, I'll explain that when we get to that. So let's go ahead and add in a custom component. Now, as a bit of a shortcut for my custom component, I'm going to go ahead and use the code from Tailwind UI here. So I'm going to be adding this hero section as a whole page template using blocks. And then this hero section actually relies on a dialogue component here for this mobile dialogue. And this is actually built on top of headless UI. So we're going to be adding in a completely custom dialogue component as well. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to the project. So for the block, I'm going to go ahead and go into registry here, go to default and then block, and I'm going to create a new file. This one here, I'm just going to name hero-01 like so, and then .tsx. And then inside of here, paste in that code for that page template. Now, as I said, it's going to have a load of errors because I'm not adding this to a project or anything like that. But what you do with this code is essentially verify this works in a project or add in all of these folders to your project. And that way it would get rid of the errors as you've had React install. And you know these paths also go to the right place as well. Because as you can see here, I'm using the ShadCN structure for the paths. So when we go ahead and install it with the CLI, this actually goes ahead and works out of the box without the user having to change the paths themselves. So once we've done that, we can simply go ahead and add in the dialog component now into our UI folder. So if I create another new file and then go dialog.tsx. And then inside of here, I'll paste in my custom dialog component and go ahead and save that as well. The next thing we need to do is since there is a default style and a New York style, I need to go ahead and copy the code over into these folders. Now you could also go ahead and just modify these styles as well. If you want a difference in style between the default one and New York, but for me, I'm just going to leave it as default for this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this hero 01 into the block for the New York folder and do the same with the dialog down here as well into this UI file. So now we need to go ahead and define the schema for these. So one of them is going to be done in registry UI. So that's going to be the dialog. For this, I'm just actually going to go ahead and copy the accordion definition here. And then I'll paste this one down here. 
Then all I need to do is change some things about this. So this doesn't actually need a custom Tailwind config. So I go ahead and delete all of that. I can change the file that it's pointing to, to dialog.tsx, the one we just created. I can change the dependency. This is actually gonna be using headless UI slash react like so. And then I can change the name up here simply to dialog like this. Go ahead and save that. Then in the blocks, I can do the same thing. So we're gonna use this login 01 as our template one. I'll go ahead and copy this, paste this in down here and then change a few things. You can go ahead and set up some categories and subcategories. I'm simply just gonna change the name here to hero 01. The registry dependencies we're gonna be taking a look at in a minute as it relies on the dialogue component. So let's go ahead and just type in dialogue here. But note, there's gonna be a bug if you use this out of the box with just the name dialogue there. If I then go ahead and change the path to the one we created, this doesn't actually have a nested folder. So I'm just gonna call this one hero1.tsx as that's what we added to our folder. And then the target, I'm gonna use it as a hero page. This is gonna create a whole new page for us. And then finally, I can actually delete this one down here as we're not using any secondary components or anything like that, that this hero page relies on. So that's actually going to be the schema set up. So what we can do now is we can run the build registry script. So all you need to do for that is go down and say pmpm run build dash registry like so. And that's gonna go ahead and run that script there. And you should see a done if everything has worked successfully. So now what you should see in your public R folder is it should see some updated entries in the JSON file. So if we go into the index.json, you'll see we have a new entry here for our dialogue and we have the existing one we had for the accordion. The other thing we also have is we have in the styles and then if we go into default, for example, we have the definition for our dialogue component in here. As you can see, it has the content that it needs to go ahead and add into the project when you run the CLI. It also has the dependencies it needs to install. And if you go to the hero one, even has the registry dependencies as well. Because as I said, this component here relies on this dialogue component to be in the project as well. So you can go ahead and get the CLI to know that, and then it will go ahead and add that for you. But there's actually a bug with this dialogue definition at the moment. That is if I simply pointed the ShadCN CLI to the hero one JSON, it's going to go ahead and think we want the ShadCN UI dialogue instead of the dialogue in my actual registry. Now we can go ahead and change this by making our registry dependencies URLs. So you could go into your registry block here and then just update this registry dependency down here to the URL to your actual dialogue.json file. But the issue with this is you're actually going to want to know which style the JSON file refers to. So if they were installing this with the New York style, for example, you could actually only point it to one URL. So I've actually gone ahead and modified the script to update this a bit so we can go ahead and fix this. To do that, then all we need to do is scroll down and you'll see this .env .example. If you just rename this one down here to .env, you can see we have the registry URL. Now this is going to be the folder that your index.json is hosted at. So the URL where the base index.json is going to be. And in my case, that's going to be localhost 8080 slash R as we'll be running a dev server. And I'll also show you a bit later how we replace this with the GitHub URL. Now what I can go ahead and do is simply just run the build registry script again. And once that's done, if we go back to our hero01 definition, what you'll see here is it's replaced the registry dependency here with the custom registry URL. And then it's also added in the styles and default here. And then if I went to the New York style, for example, and then into that hero one, you'll see that it's changed it out for the New York style and pointed it to the correct JSON file. So that's just a really quick way that you could go ahead and fix this issue. And as I said, you'll see all I've left in is the dialogue component here. Now there is actually a catch with this, which is it's gonna go ahead and update all of your registry dependencies to use that URL format from your own registry. So if you did actually want to use some ShadCN components, say this one wanted to install the actual ShadCN button, you'd have to go ahead and update the script. But as I said, this is the one that's working for Jolly UI and you can go modify that script as and when you want, or you could simply just paste in the URL for the dialogue.json here if you wanted to do it a different way and a more manual way. The good news is though, we're pretty much ready to go ahead and use our components in the ShadCN CLI. All we have to do is host those JSON files somewhere. Now, a quick note, I did update this hero block here to add in the hero icons dependency, just so that everything is ready when we go ahead and use this one. And that's updated the registry as well. But to go ahead and use these JSON files, if we want to test this locally, we can actually go to the terminal and in this project, you can just do pmpm run dev. This is just going to spin up a quick HTTP server, which is going to host the files from this public folder. And what you'll see there is we can connect to that on localhost. 8080. So that's the one we're going to be using to start with. And we're going to need to go ahead and open up a project where we actually want to install these components into. So for me, that is this ShadCN demo project here. It's just a basic one created with create next app. And then I've also done the ShadCN init command. Now to add our components, we need to find out the URL. Now to add our components, all we need to do is go ahead and do pmpm dlx or npx. And then we can do ShadCN here. And then I can say add, and then we need the URL to our component. Now you can find this out by just going to the actual localhost 8080 
on a browser here, if we go into this folder structure here, let's say we wanted to install the dialog component. We can click into styles here. Let's say I want the one from default. I can go ahead and click this dialog.json here. And let's go ahead and copy this URL up here and paste that into the shadcn command line. So if we open that back up and then paste in this component and press enter, what you'll see is it's gonna go ahead and check the registry for us, install the dependencies we need for that custom dialog component. And it's also gone ahead and created the file there. So if I now go to components, dialog.tsx, you can see that custom one that we define using headless UI has been added to our project and all of the dependencies have been added as well. We can do the same thing for the hero page now as well. If I simply just use the same command we used last time, because I know the URL now, I can simply replace this here with hero and then dash 01 like so. Hit enter, it's gonna check the registry. It's gonna install the dependencies. Since we've already added dialogue, it's gonna ask if we want to overwrite that. I'm simply gonna say yes. What you can see there is it's created one file. It's created the hero page.tsx for us, which we defined in our schema. And then it's also added the dialogue file as well and installed all of the dependencies that that template page needed. So if I click in here, you can see we have this custom Tailwind UI component that I created earlier. So if we go ahead and run our dev server now for this Next.js project, we can check that this all worked correctly. If I go to localhost 3000, and then to the new hero page that I added in, so slash hero. What you see here is we have that Tailwind UI component, so my custom component that I added to a registry, installed all of the components and everything is working as expected. If I go ahead and make this smaller so we get the mobile nav, you see we're using that dialogue component, the custom one that uses headless UI, and everything has been added to our project. It's working, all of the dependencies have been managed, and it literally took seconds to go ahead and get started with this. So the final thing I want to show you is a really simple way that you could host these JSON files and that's using GitHub. So we go back to the registry project. If I then shut down the dev server, I'm gonna go ahead and change the branch that I was on. Obviously you'd wanna go ahead and add these files to your own repo. Please don't add them to mine as a PR, but I'm gonna simply do git switch here, dash C, and then let's call this one demo. So now that I've done that, we need to change the registry URL to use the raw GitHub user content ones. So if I go ahead and change the .env here, if I go ahead and paste an example, so this one is gonna look like this, what you see is you're simply gonna wanna do raw.github user content, then it's gonna be the repo that you're using, refs, head, and then also the branch that you're using here. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is delete what came after this, as we're gonna wanna point it to this public and then slash r file here, as we wanna go to the base index.json. So now that I've done that, I need to rebuild my registry. So I can run pmpm run build registry again, like so. And once that's done, what we should see inside of our components is you'll see it's using that raw GitHub user content link for any of our registry dependencies as well. So I can now go ahead and commit this all to that GitHub branch. So on GitHub then, I'm in my demo repo here. You see we have that public R folder. So let's say I wanted to go ahead and install that Hero01 component again. I could go to styles. I could then go to the default one. I can go to my Hero01, click on raw here, go ahead and copy the URL for this. So where we want to install this then, so in our demo project, let's go ahead and run that same command. So pmpm dlx shadcn and then add, and then we can paste in that raw GitHub user content JSON file there. Paste that in, it's gonna check the registry, install the dependencies, and you see it exhibits the exact same behavior as when we ran that locally. And it's gone ahead and added in those files for us using that custom page that we have, and also our custom dialog component as well. So you can see that's a pretty cool hack to go ahead and host your components on GitHub. So hopefully then you can see the power of the new ShadCN command line and how in seconds we can get our own components and templates into any project with our own registry. This is particularly awesome if you have your own copy and paste component templates like I do for Jolly UI. But you can also see how this will be super useful for pretty much any common code or any templates that you need to install, even if they're not UI libraries. So you can see in the example of his tweet, how he had Superbase auth as a JSON file and a load of various other things. It's just gonna be a really great way to share code. ShadCN really is becoming a philosophy and a new web dev trend, giving ownership of the code to everyone so components have the maximum customability but maintain their usability and accessibility as well, thanks to building on top of headless UI libraries as well. Now, if you want to check out a video on why I like React Area components, go ahead and watch this one here or watch the one that YouTube thinks you'll like. As always, thanks for watching and happy coding.